Shadows Behind the Throne 2 is a very interesting game where you play as some kind of eldritch being who's intent on destroying mankind. Their doom is almost certain because you cannot be defeated, only delayed. This makes you feel like you're a Lovecraftian horror. Humanity exists on borrowed time. At the beginning you get to design yourself by giving yourself two different names. The names grant you your special powers. There's a lot of cool ones available. For my first playthrough I chose Winter's Scythe, which causes the entire world to slowly freeze over whenever death and conflict occurs, and The Promise of Teeth, which gave me Beguile, Reduce Evidence, and Reduce Suspicion. The second game I tried with The Wretched Birth, which provides control over some gigantic fleshy monstrosity that spreads all over the map and chips away at humanity. I combined this with Merchant of Nightmares, which grants all kinds of nice stuff to sunder the minds of mortals with. My third game I went with Priest of the Deep, which gives you control over the Deep Ones and makes you like Dagon. And I combined this with the Wretched Birth. Finally there's the Omnipresent Darkness, which is all of the powers together. It seems like cheating, but it's there if you want it. So how this works is you start out with nothing, you're just an evil consciousness looking at a map. But you're able to subjugate people and make them into your puppets. But you can only subjugate three of them at a time, although you can raise this limit in the settings if you want to. Each kind of person has their own way of infiltrating the establishment and corrupting it for you. Merchants can acquire and sell stock for wealth, then spend this wealth to bankroll the city. This gives the city lots of money which they spend on supplies and weapons, and it also increases your standing in the city. The more you fund the city, the more its local ruler will like you. Inspectors can attend parties and rub noses with the aristocracy to increase favour. The more a ruler likes your puppet, the more effective your infiltration attempts are. Infiltrating the city will unlock different kinds of actions your puppets can perform there, but infiltration leaves evidence behind which can be found by inspectors. The world is terrified of the encroaching darkness, so people are highly suspicious. They know when something smells fishy and they begin to investigate. Merchants don't have many ways of defending themselves, but they can plead their innocence to reduce suspicion from the lords. Inspectors can also plead their innocence to reduce suspicion, but they've also got abilities like plant false evidence, which they can use to incriminate others within the city, as well as make false accusations. The more your puppet is liked and respected, the heavier these accusations will seem. It happened often enough during my playthrough that I was able to raise suspicion to 100% on people that were investigating my puppets, then they get blamed and killed instead. When someone becomes convinced that your puppet is a servant of darkness, a paladin will come for you. When the paladin reaches your puppet, they will kill it. You cannot defend yourself from the paladin. But if the lord has been corrupted enough, your puppet will be sheltered within the corrupt city and come to no harm. Corrupt lords have a high chance of being found out and executed though, at which point someone else will be sent to rule in their stead and your puppet is doomed. You can run away, and if you keep running away, the paladin will eventually run out of supplies and give up the chase. But usually you're somehow blacklisted in that kingdom from then on, and cannot work effectively. You can also make agents. Agents are very powerful minions, and there's four different kinds, each with a unique way to sow destruction. Vampires are the masters of infiltration. They can infiltrate very effectively, and once their claws are sunk in, they can send the local monarch insane, or corrupt them. Infiltrating quickly and sending people insane is my primary use for them. Seekers work to find clues about the truth of the universe and humanity's doomed position within it. A seeker can spend time gathering clues and then present it to a monarch to snap their sanity or make them give up all hope and become a puppet. They have more powers, but I didn't use them much. Dark Hierophants are the master corruptors of a monarch. Their ability is all about corrupting a noble to your will, so you can use this noble to manipulate affairs on the nation level. Voting for legislation that supports your cause, and voting against legislation that doesn't, warmongering, etc. My favourite thing to do with a corrupt noble was make them spew xenophobic rhetoric and incite rebellions to fracture empires apart, and cause civil wars. Civil wars make battlefields, which are very useful for the necromantic doctors. Necromantic Doctors are my favourite agent. 
They go from city to city with a corpse cart, gathering corpses. In cities you've corrupted nicely, you can falsify paperwork to legally collect corpses, which gives you lots of them and leaves no evidence behind. Otherwise you can rob graves, which gives you less corpses and also leaves evidence behind, which will eventually lead to a paladin on your tail. You can also find battlefields, which will fill your cart up to full capacity. The tricky thing is corpses left in your cart decay at a rate of one corpse per turn, so you need to bring them to corpse root fields for storage. A necromantic doctor can create these fields out in the wilderness. A good strategy is to fill the fields slowly to the brim with corpses, then reanimate them all in one go. The undead hordes will ravage the countryside, leaving ruins where cities once stood. The entire world will freak out at the dead coming and unite against them, but you can use your puppets to sabotage negotiations and do other mischief to keep humanity divided so it cannot respond properly. The undead hordes are not under your direct control. They do their own thing, but they seem very effective and they were my primary means of killing off humanity, along with the fleshy minions from the wretched birth. I love this game. Any kind of game that lets me be the destroyer of humanity on a strategic level is a good game in my books. This one approaches it in an interesting way that I haven't seen before. It scores well in all categories, but loses out a little on minion diversity. I'm a little unsure how to score this one for diversity. On one hand, the diversity of undead minions you have is pretty low, just vampires and undead hordes. But once you start including other stuff like the flesh monstrosity and its minions, as well as the deep ones, your other types of agents, and even the subjugated mortals, it seems to be quite diverse. My feeling is that the game has above average minion diversity, but there's room for even more. The fleshy structures and minions from the wretched birth are your most reliable soldiers. The deep ones and undead are more difficult to acquire. The undead are your strongest soldiers, and they really have the ability to leave so much destruction in their wake. I found the deep ones to be underpowered and expensive. They're more useful as a way to send people insane rather than as a military weapon and seem weaker than the undead or the wretched birth. But you can use them to great effect in sending coastal cities insane with siren calls and keep the seas full of fishmen to help distract humanity from responding to the wretched birth or the undead. They're just another useful weapon in the arsenal. For the best minions experience, I recommend going with the wretched birth and the priest of the deep. If you don't find the deep ones useful, perhaps swap them out for something else like Merchant of Nightmares or Winter's Scythe. You can pick up the game from itch.io, and the developer asks for any price, so presumably you could buy this for one cent. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. I think it's a scummy thing to do. I gave the guy the seven or eight bucks he wanted for the enhanced version, because that seems about the right price. Thanks for watching, I've got more info on necromancy videos, games, books, etc. coming soon.